Now, Homeland Security is admittedly monitoring the Drudge Report, the New York Times, social media, and plenty more. And no, it's not because some jihadist is twittering, OBL would have been proud of me for my upcoming attack. This is a war on us, as we all know, and Homeland Security is nothing more than a Stasi network. But, of course, we already knew that Homeland Security was spying on the Drudge Report, as well as InfoWars and plenty of other places. That came out in December of 2010. Uh, people like Congressman Bob Barr uh, vowed to investigate it and were plenty mad about the infringement of civil rights, something to keep an eye on. Meanwhile, cashless society. India implements the first biometric ID program for all of its 1.2 billion residents. Not only is this a gigantic feat, it's a very scary big brother move. Recently, India has launched a nationwide program involving the allocation of a unique identification number, UID, to every one of its 1.2 billion residents, many of whom live in far-reaching rural areas. Each of the numbers will be tied to biometric data of the recipient using three different forms of information, fingerprints, iris scans, and a picture of the face, and all 10 digits of the hand will be recorded as well as both eyes. And uh, Aaron Sains of the Singularity Hub is quoted in here saying he wouldn't be surprised if it went on to be part of a cashless payment system. In fact, writes Brandon Turboville, the author of this article, this is exactly the intention with India's new biometric ID program. In fact, the cashless society is the stated goal of the UID program. CEO of Mind Trees IT Services, the company awarded with the government contract for development and maintenance of the UID, explained in an interview with Computer Weekly that the ID scheme will support a cashless society. He said all vendors will have a biometric reader and citizens can pay for things with a fingerprint scan, even a bag of rice. Not only is this incredible, it's very sad, especially given the fact that Gandhi, uh, father of the Indian nation, started his protest in South Africa against biometric systems created by the eugenicists, no doubt. Uh, including fingerprint cards and identification cards. They burned them in protest, but now India has turned its back on their founding father and implemented an awful far-reaching biometric program. And, of course, it's coming to the rest of the world as well. Another test case. Meanwhile, scientists find that people are addicted to computer use, especially on the Internet. Internet addiction has, for the first time, been linked with changes in the brain similar to those people addicted to alcohol, cocaine, and cannabis. In a groundbreaking study, researchers use MRI scanners to reveal abnormalities in the brain of adolescents who spent many hours on the Internet to the detriment of their social and personal lives. Uh, they found that the white matter fibers of the brain uh, connected to everything from emotional processing, attention, decision-making, and cognitive cognitive control were all affected and uh, in some ways it's a no-brainer but at the same time they found that people who are addicted to online games are particularly vulnerable to the addiction many of them staying up all nights playing it and the rest of it meanwhile dr. Andrew Wakefield has sued the British Medical Journal and journalist Brian Deere for defamation because he had to because it's common sense but they won't tell the truth as usual the man who has been shamelessly mocked, repeatedly lied about, and cruelly defamed for his legitimate scientific research into the combination of measles, mumps, and rubella MMR vaccine and autism in children. But Dr. Andrew Wakefield is now fighting back against those responsible for viciously denigrating his work and character by filing a lawsuit against the British Medical Journal, which published lies about him and journalist Brian Deere, who authored many of those lies. What other choice do you have when they just try to mock you for pointing out that these vaccines are hurting, hurting people? It's a lot more than just his name at stake. These are actual real children being affected. And in fact, when we go to break coming up, we're going to play an interview Alex did with one autistic child. His father said that the autism came up after the second round of shots. Uh, I don't recall which one, but it's in the clip. That's coming up later. But just so many children it's affected. There's obviously something going on. And Wakefield is a respectable guy. He's been doing real research. It's a shame that they attack him. 
In other news, South Carolina officials are investigating 900 dead voters who were found to vote in recent elections. Director Shvedo's research has revealed evidence that over 900 deceased people appeared to have voted, quote unquote, in recent elections in South Carolina said a statement Wednesday, an alarming number clearly necessitates an investigation into potential criminal activity. Of course, it's nothing new. They've been stuffing ballot boxes and putting dead people's names on voter registers for a long time, but it's just a reminder that so-called elections have never been fair and free. They've always been controlled by the system. Uh, in many cases, different criminal factions stealing elections against each other. So how would an honest person come up uh, now, meanwhile, we have video from New Hampshire in the primary where one person did an investigation where they went to the ballots and used dead people's name and they were given ballots. They didn't actually vote. Uh, but we're going to show part of that clip now where they demonstrate how they were allowed to vote with dead people's names in New Hampshire just the other day during the primary. Right. There you go, Mr. Now, I'll tell you what, I've left my and you can see the, the birth date and the death date of the name that they're using. I don't need it. I'll go and get it anyway, if you don't mind. I prefer to. I don't need register. I don't need identification. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, no. boy. We have it here. You just have to. Yeah. As long as you're on our, on our registered goal list, you're allowed to vote. I can just vote. That's OK. Yes. All right. Well, I'll get my ID anyway. Uh, but thank you very much. See you shortly. Bye-bye. Okay. Here we are, George F. at St. James Place. That's the address. Okay, and you're a registered Democrat. That's, that's the registration. Okay, so here's the Democratic ballot. And the pens are in the booth. But I haven't got my ID with my identification. You don't, you don't have to. In the state of New Hampshire, they don't require it. All right, so there's no way of checking who's voting. Uh, if somebody else came in and said they were George Darcy, we wouldn't let them vote because we've now checked off George Darcy. Okay. And that's the only check there is right. system. I got some idea anyway. Oh, you can go. It's okay, thanks. You're welcome. You have a uh, Thomas McCarran? And this video goes on and on. It's over 10 minutes long. You could debate if it's a good idea to uh, require identification when voting, but obviously it can play into the hands of voter fraud. They can obviously use black box voting machines as well. Now, I said it was a struggle for reality. Uh, that's because we've obviously been following the corporate prostitute media's ongoing attacks against Ron Paul, including the very popular meme that he can't win, that he's not a real candidate. So tonight we're going to award the first ever prostitute media award, and it goes to Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC, uh, an avowed socialist, I believe. I, I, I don't want to totally quote myself on that, but I remember seeing him talking about some of his extreme views, but of course he defines reality for us. Let's go to that clip now. So if you take Ron Paul out of this, and if you take out all those independent voters who went out there today for Ron Paul, what would have happened to Huntsman? Huntsman is the real second here. He, he came in in the real second. He came in in the real second. He came in in the real second. He came in strong. Yeah, Huntsman's the real winner, a guy who had no pulse and polls for months, and then he was propped up in, by the establishment after so many other candidates fell off the wagon. It's amazing how many media personalities tell us they can predict the future and, and really have such contempt for voters. And, and that's why we're giving him the Prestitute Media Award. But in, in conjunction with that, I want to read some quotes about the CIA's involvement in media, uh, just as one caveat to how controlled the sad, sick corporate media is. You got the Rockefeller. Uh, foundations, the Ford Foundation, all these big money interests controlling everything, skull and bones with all these members in the media, including the founders of Time Magazine, Life Magazine, and the rest of it. Here's William Colby, former CIA director in the 70s, saying the Central Intelligence Agency owns everyone of any significance in the major media. You've also got a quote from a CIA operative in a book about Catherine Graham, the head of the Washington Post, uh, a lifelong Bilderberger and, and total operative. You could get a journalist cheaper than a good call girl for a couple hundred dollars a month. How's that for a prostitute quote? Uh, cheaper than a call girl. That's what a prostitute is, these corporate media hacks. Uh, you've also got William B. Bader, a former CIA intelligence officer, saying it's quite incredible spread of relationships. You don't need to manipulate Time magazine, for example, because there are CIA agency people at the management level. Yeah, those are skull and bones people. 
Henry Luce, among others, and, and one of the Harriman brothers, I believe. You've also got Carl Bernstein, one of the two Watergate reporters. The agency's relationship with the New York Times was by far its most valuable among newspapers. According to CIA officials, it was General Times policy to provide assistance to the CIA whenever possible. Well, those are all kind of classic quotes under the Operation Mockingbird model. Uh, things are somewhat different in the Internet age, but all the more reason why there's so many just blatant prostitutes on the cable news channels. Uh, so there you go, Lawrence, and, and many more to come because there's so many prostitute reporters out there. Uh, meanwhile, you've got... Oh, I've, I almost forgot. We have another award for Lawrence O'Donnell here on the inaugural Prostitute Award ceremony. Uh, is it time for that clip, guys? They, they tried to take away his prostitute media award, but I guess he fought for it. Let's, let's look at this. And so there you go, Lawrence O'Donnell, the Skeksy Award from the Dark Crystal at the very heart of the Dark New World Order system. A little bonus award for you on this inaugural Prestitute Award. There'll be many more prostitutes to come, I'm sure. In fact, the next story deals with that in part. Ron Paul, people call me kooky because they can't defend themselves intellectually. Uh, reporter with Fox and Friends, Gretchen Carlson, ask him if, if people call him kooky because of his foreign policy or, or is it some other reason? Ron Paul, of course, points out that they use those terms because they de can't defend themselves intellectually. He separately blasted an MSNBC reporter for trying to insinuate that he wanted to hurt the children and cut a Head Start program when he's calling for a, a complete sweep of bureaucratic waste of money and, and cutting of programs, not targeting children just to make him look bad. And, and so let's go to that clip now. Do you believe that some people call you kooky because of your foreign policy only? They do the, use those terms because they can't defend themselves intellectually. If they say my foreign policy is kooky, maybe they ought to look at what's happening. Uh, why, why is invading a country like in Iraq, who never did a thing to us, kill a lot of people, then turn it over to the Shiites who are now allies with the Iranians? I call that kooky. So again, this is all about the false scripted corporate media reality that you're supposed to sit at home and go along with. But if you start talking about what's really happening in the world, as Ron Paul, among others, does so often, then then you're kooky somehow. And you notice how these prostitutes are nice to his face. They, they kind of ask it in a sense that refers to someone else, but then they snipe him constantly during airtime when he's not actually on. It's all just this undermining anyone who might call in the totally radical, insane foreign policy that's going on, all as they wage covert war in Iran, leading to an overt war.